Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope that you've been doing well. Today I'd like to talk about a new star reduction technique that's available in PixInsight. This is a subject, a topic of mine that's been a passion for me. As you know, a few years ago I developed my own uh, star reduction technique. These techniques, what they do is they try to de-emphasize stars. This is my way of thinking about it, in such a way that when you have a star-crowded field where the stars are a distraction, they make it more difficult to see the nebulosity or a galaxy, you de-emphasize them. You make them a little smaller or you fade them a bit so that the object of interest stands out in contrast a bit better. So there are many approaches. There were some old approaches, and I produced a few years ago kind of a new take on how to do star reduction, but today, now, there's yet another. So a gentleman named Bill Blanchon has produced a set of pixel math expressions which you can use to your advantage to do star reduction in a different way. And it's actually a very powerful way. So I look forward to showing you um, all about his particular methodology here. I first came across this new technique by seeing a content creator's YouTube video. His name is Luke Newbold, and he had invited Bill Blanchon to come on his channel and explain all about his new star reduction technique and his pixel math expressions. So in the description down below of this video, you'll see a link that goes to that original video. And I encourage you to go see what Bill Blanchon had to say about his own technique in his own words, of course. Here, though, I'd like to show a little snippet of what inspired Bill, apparently, to begin to think about star reduction in a different way. You know, there's plenty of other alternative methods. I actually don't like any of the alternative methods. And it's not a knock against, you know, some of the well-known people who have done it. You know, the stuff that, you know, the, the easy processing suite, the way they're doing it. Just, I mean, they, they do a really good job, but the star reduction will leave artifacts. I've never liked it. Um, and again, I'm not going to bring in other people's names um, because I actually admire a lot of these people who... So I, I think I just got de-emphasized. That's okay, I got de-emphasized. Let me say what Bill didn't say. There is a script in PixInsight that you can use. It's the EZ script, which uh, has a number of automated processes to kind of uh, make processing a bit easier. And one of those steps is star reduction. And within there, there are a couple of techniques. There's morphological selection, and then there's my technique. So Bill was pretty sure he was talking about me. Um, and that's okay, no problem there at all. And certainly whenever you use an automated way of uh, you know, doing certain things, because you don't fine tune it, uh, there are certainly gonna be more artifacts than you would otherwise get, right? But one of the nice things about, I think, Bill's technique is that it is more broadly, globally works on a greater range of data sets without much fine tuning. So in that sense, it's certainly a step forward and I'll be uh, demonstrating that here. But I just want to add, as far as the technique that I used, it was a literal star reduction technique in the sense it was an answer to the erosion type methods, the morphological selection, for example, which are going to always have crazy kind of artifacts because you're looking at neighboring pixels around stars. My technique, the way it worked, and I think it was one of the first to do this, was to utilize a starless image to solve this very problem, to take the results, the content-aware kind of results that you get from a starless image, and substitute that, those values, around the stars that you want to reduce. So that's the way my technique works. And one of its values isn't so much the degree to which it works, and it works reasonably well, uh, but it's also the value in the process of how you actually do it. Um, some of the steps that are used to do this kind of star reduction to make a mask and to do some other things have value outside of how well the technique either works or doesn't work. So below in the description, again, I'm going to um, show my original technique, the steps that you use, because there's value there, instructional value there, as well as uh, one of the later kind of um, results of that, which is a script that you can use uh, to use my particular technique for those fine tuning bits. In fact, speaking of scripts, I would expect very soon, although I'm going to be showing you here, and again, another thing I'll have in the description, are the pixel math expressions that you can download for yourself. 
I think, though, very shortly that this will become a script. You won't need to download the, uh, the pixel math and spre and, um, expression. Someone very soon is going to make a script uh, that wraps all of Bill's expressions and makes it even easier, I think, to use. So let's get right to it and look at Bill's star reduction technique. The first thing that you need to do is to load that bundle of process icons in your PixInsight session. So you go to process icons, you load them. I've already downloaded them, so please do that. Load them to your desktop. They'll show up somewhere, but you can force them to be arranged where you expect to see your process icons by choosing arrange icons here. And now for me, it shows up on the upper right. You can see that there are three methods. Each of these things is a pixel math instance. So if you double click, you will load pixel math with Bill's work. Now the way Bill has organized these is to put the parameters that you adjust at the top. There's just a few things to adjust. And then at the bottom, you'll find the equation itself. So in this video, I am going to be showing how they interact, how these methods work on images. Uh, and you can see some of the differences. But lots of people have already done that. What I like to do is actually explain how it works. Because one of the things that is done today is to utilize starless images with other images and somehow take advantage of that information or blend that information together in creative ways. Understanding how this works will give you power and agency to do other kinds of manipulations on your own because you'll see how this thing does its job. So that is the kind of information that I like to put, that kind of content I like to put into my instructional videos on my website at adamblockstudios.com. With that in mind, uh, let's go forward and look at the power of this star reduction technique. I'd like to begin by explaining this main parameter here of the tool. It says it's the S value that you're going to make an adjustment. You'll find down in the equation below, it's associated with a function that's called MTF. That stands for Midtones Transfer Function. Now, you already know what that is, even if you didn't know the name. This is something that we use all the time whenever we manipulate the brightnesses of images. You know that there's a black point slider over here if we're just looking at the screen transfer function. There's a white point little carrot here and then in the middle this is the one that we can manipulate that will change the overall brightness of an image. And by manipulating that particular value you change the output in such a way that you actually make a curve. If you do this by dragging the midtones to the right it's going to decrease the brightness of your image and, and let me just demonstrate that. So here it is going to the right. And then if you go the other way to the left of what is 50% uh, gray, uh, the mid-tone itself, you're going to make it a brighter and brighter image. Again, looking at the curve, you can see why that is so. You're going to make the mid-values brighter uh, than they originally were. So this value that's associated with making that curve, there's just one value. It's this value right here, the midtones value. You'll also see that value here if you put your cursor on the midtone slider in the screen transfer function. That's the value that the S thing stands for in this equation. Now that you know this S parameter is the adjustment of the midtones, I can tell you exactly how this star reduction technique works. We adjust the midtones, making it a bigger number here, and you'll notice that it makes the image look darker. And by doing so, we're seeing less of the faint parts of stars. That means we're only seeing the very brightest parts of the image, which is effectively like a star reduction. I just put that in little air quotes here. So this image here looks like star reduced versions of this image here. This is a technique that I employ in my instructional videos, but here it's been formalized in this uh, pixel math expression. So you can see that in my inst um, instructional videos, this step as well as the next step that I'll be demonstrating. So we choose some level of, I'm putting again, quote, star reduction. And what level is it? Well, the default here is 0.15, but look, I keep making this a bigger number. In fact, the answer here is 0.85 because if you look at his equation down below, he has a little tilde s. 
He took the inverse. He took one minus the actual value here. One minus 0.85 is 0.15. I don't know what he has against 0.85. Maybe just to make things look better, 0.85 seems arbitrary, while 0.15 seems like a nicer number. But that's exactly how it's working. So in a moment when I demonstrate, you're going to see that there is uh, this exact amount of reduction of brightness of the image uh, that we'll be taking advantage of, that we'll be using. In order to use this code, we do need this starless image. Now I've gone ahead and I've created the starless image ahead of time. It's here. You can use any method you enjoy. You can use Russ Croman's uh, star exterminator, or you could use uh, StarNet2 to make that starless image. But you have to have this handy so that we have everything we need to run the tool here. And what I'd like to do is actually deconstruct this equation and to show you how exactly how it works step by step. But before I do it, I want to impress you with this idea that because of what, what I've described, you'll notice that when we change this curve here, we only do it from uh, a 0.5 setting. When we actually have the midtones at precisely 0.5, there is no difference in the image, right? The input and the output is exactly the same. And what I'm trying to tell you is that if I make this 0.5 here just to demonstrate I understand this thing, nothing is going to happen. There will be no star reduction, no matter what is in that equation down below, because it relies on this particular adjustment. I implied it to the image, but you see there's no change of any sort. So let's put it back to the default, and then we'll go down below, and let's deconstruct the work here. I'm going to make his equation just a comment, so we can take it apart piece by piece. This part here is the part that I've been describing, where we adjust the brightness of an image, making it less bright, and that's kind of like a, a reduction, of, a star reduction when we're looking at stars. So I'm gonna paste this here, and I'm just going to be applying this to our images. So here is the original image, and remember how much uh, debrightening we saw a moment ago? There it is. So now we have, this is kind of like the 0.85, but it's the inverse of that. And we need to do this, I'm working from the inside out, we need to do the same thing right here to the starless image. That's the image one variable. The starless image, we need to do the same thing. So we're going to decrease its brightness in exactly the same way. So both of these images are now, uh, they've had the same operation applied. You'll see that they are both in the inverted sense, and I'll explain why that is, but first let me just do it. So that's the next step in the process. We invert these two images, and then it says we need to divide the two images, one by the other, and this is the interesting step. So now I will take our starless, in, well, yeah, uh, let's, let's do it in the order that he has it. We will take M27 clear, and then divide it by the starless image. That is now this whole thing right here. And this result, let me just show you the result. Uh, and before I do, let's not replace the image. Let's make a new image. Here's the result. You'll see that now we just get stars. And these are the reduced stars, because remember, this image right here was created after we did that brightness debrightening of the image. So these are effectively reduced stars. There is no nebula here. In fact, there's no background here. The reason is because, and this is why we're working in the inverted sense, when you take one image like this and divide it by another, anything that's the same between the two images, like the nebula, take the nebula, these two uh, nebulas are precisely the same. So when I divide one value by another that is exactly the same, it just goes to one. The same is true for the background. These background values here, this says 0.97, the background here is again 0.97. When you divide two equal numbers, you get back one. The only difference between these two images are the stars, and these are reduced stars. Now, the cool thing about doing a division, sometimes people, and Bill explains this, they try to add or subtract two images, but by doing a division here to get the differences between images, this is called ratioing. We are actually looking at the fractional difference between images this uh, this difference between these uh, two images is just in the amount of stars, but it goes from a fixed value, either one or zero, all the way to the value of whatever it is, the ratio that you're trying to get at. So these stars go all the way from, in this case, 
a value that is one, if we look at this result here, you'll find that um, in the, uh, the stars only image, sorry, that these values here in the background, they're all ones. And then the stars take on any value that goes from one all the way to however dark these stars are. By working in this inverted sense, all of these values become one. But then when we do the following, when we do this and invert it back, now we have zeros everywhere except for our reduced stars. That's the trick. And this is a trick that by not using an addition or subtraction, we get it all the way to a floor value, which means we're only looking at the information of just the stars. And there's no problem with the, uh, the, you know, the difference in backgrounds or brightnesses or anything like that. So we end up with reduced stars coming into what we want to do is put it into the starless image. And that is this last step here. You'll see that we take this thing and we multiply it by the starless image to put it back together. Uh, but let me just demonstrate one last part. So we have now this image that just has reduced stars, right? And we need to put everything together. But I note one more thing, and this is the other thing that I actually demonstrate in my videos on my site. I produce this exact same thing when you make an image less bright and then you blend it into the starless image. What method do I use? I use the screen method. So when I saw this equation, I went, oh, I know what Bill's doing. Check it out. What we have here is the form of an inverted image. And I'll just write this as a general form here. We have an inverted image like image um, A, and then we have times image B, inverted image B. I'm doing this terrible, I'm sorry. And then the whole thing you invert at the end, that form I instantly recognize is the screen blending mode. This thing right here, this equation, is the screen blending mode. That's all it is. So if you look up above, you have this thing divided by this thing, but you end up with an inverted image here, times an inverted image here, and then you invert the whole thing. That's exactly what this is right here. So the, the step that this is using is we do this division to get these star reduced things, and then we use the screen blending mode to put it all together. Those are the steps. That's how the star reduction technique works. I can demonstrate that by now taking the inverted version of this thing here. And let me just get back our original starless image here. So here is the, because I need now the original starless image. Let me just undo this. Here's our original starless image. And here are our stars here, stars reduced. To put everything back together, we can just use this fancy statement here, which is to combine our starless image with our stars reduced. And then we use the blending mode. Uh, I should have put an underscore, sorry. The screen blending mode like this. This is going to give us the image that we want. So let's make sure I'm, yeah, I should have done that correctly. And there it is. So now we should compare this to the original image that we began with, which is here. And we can put one image over the top of the other. Let's make them both the same size. And we can see the star reduction. I just wanted to show you this equation because it simplifies what we're seeing here. You can see the method that's being used. So let me uh, match these two things like this. And then we can blink the two. And indeed, you see the star reduction that's taking place. In fact, just to prove that I kind of think I've got this right, I will now reset his tool and then just straight up apply it to the image and we can compare to my result here. I'll call this after. This is my after, but let's just go ahead and apply the star reduction straight up his pixel math. And then we can blink my result with his result, and you'll see they are identical in every way. So that is the math that's being used. That's how we're taking advantage of star reduction using this particular first method. But the other methods basically build on this same theme of 
creating an image that has less brightness, that is the star reduction, blending with screen mode, and then he has some additional things that are going on where in the step, uh, in his method number two, where he uses kind of a halo uh, type um, tool, and then in his third method where he's kind of averaging things together to get an even either more aggressive or uh, less aggressive result. So Bill should be congratulated with coming up with a really great way to easily create one of these star reduced images using this technique of uh, debrightening an image, making an image less bright, and then transferring, if you will, that's the method, those stars um, into uh, the original starless image and putting it all together. Perfect. Works perfectly. And I'd like to demonstrate that. Um, I showed this to you on black and white images. I want to show it to you on a color image here. The reason I thought it was nice to look at the black and white is because when you look at the inverted version of color images, it looks all bizarre. Uh, but let's just go ahead and do that here in the real sense. So the first step I need to do is take this color image, which by the way is not fully processed. This is just the beginning of an LRGB image, but it's good enough to perhaps show what happens with the star reduction here. I have to create a starless image of this. So let me go ahead and do that. Let me make a starless version of this. I need that. Okay, here it is. I will give it a name. Well, I guess I need to make a copy of this. So here's the original, and now here is our starless version, like this. So if we already in use, yes, that's true. So this will be starless one, which means that over here, I need to call this starless one. And we can just apply this to the image, and we can see the nice star reduction that we get. Look at that. Lots of star reduction here. And uh, maybe you make the image a little brighter, like this. But and maybe take out the sky a little bit like this. But there we have it. We have kind of the before. Lots and lots of stars in the after. This is a lot, I think, for this image. This image... Um, is, uh, has very you know big stars, oversampled stars. So perhaps this is the kind of thing where instead of more, we actually want to do less. So maybe we do a 0.2 here and we see what kind of reduction we get when we do that. Maybe that's a little bit kinder uh, for this particular image, for example. Uh, so there we have it, it's wonderful. It works really, really well. The second method, let me just bring up the second method here is one that takes advantages of halos uh, around stars. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this one. Um, he demonstrates in the video, again, that I have below, uh, you can go watch his original explanation, how halos are generated. And by the way, my technique utilizes a similar kind of idea by identifying the regions around stars to have a particular kind of reduction take place. Uh, what I find what, interesting about this particular method is that it results in kind of a similar look as far as uh, you know my method and this particular method because you're really working more on the outer parts of the star. Uh, by the way, this didn't work because I needed this to be starless one. This was working, <laughs> that was using the grayscale version. There, let's do that again. There we go. And you'll see that it strongly affects kind of the outsides of stars and the centers of the stars remain relatively bright, uh, but very strongly affects the outer parts of the star. And that's very similar to my technique in the sense that I, that's where I was doing my work to take the data itself from a starless image and, you know, substitute it for that region around stars. And then finally, the technique that I think is probably uh, the most nuanced and the one that gives the greatest amount of control is the last method here. And he has, you know, iterations that you can play with and different methods where you have a strong method, moderate method, and then the soft one. This one I kind of like. Uh, and of all the things that I've seen of these methods, the soft reduction is the one that uh, that is more along the lines of my style, I think. So what I would do if I wanted to use it is I just change this mode to three. I'll keep it for the moment in one iteration. Uh, down below, you can see his equations. They still rely on the, uh, the very ideas that we've been uh, looking at earlier, but put together with either averaging values and things like that, then you can get these kinds of results. 
So let's check it out here. We will apply to this image like this. I did it again, didn't I? You're going to see me make this mistake like t so don't do that mistake. Got to use the correct starless image. <laughs> there we go. So we have the before here and the after and you can see how much more subtle it is. You could do more iterations of course, but this is what I would call a star de-emphasis. It's not really a big reduction, but it's a little bit of a reduction. Just kind of takes things down a little bit in a fairly nice way. Now, I, I might propose that there are some uh, additional features that you could add uh, to some of the things that Bill has done here. For example, for me, one of the things that, uh, that I tried to do in my particular uh, version of star reduction is I didn't want the reduction to actually even touch the very brightest stars. So some of these super, super bright ones, just leave them alone. And it's really the, the bulk of all the medium to especially the smallest stars where the de-emphasis is important. And then what happens is in an image like this, some of these brighter stars kind of remain at their natural form and they sparkle more. Uh, and all of the other kind of dimmer stars, fainter ones, those are the ones that we want most of that de-emphasis to happen with, and those are the ones that uh, should be most strongly affected. So that is my kind of, I wouldn't call it a review, I wanted to really kind of explain the methodology here in this new set of pixel math expressions. I would, as I say, I predict that someone is going to make a nice script out of this, and I can imagine some nice features that would go with this script, so I hope maybe this will be an ongoing conversation. Uh, but a really great work and great job in producing uh, a very usable and super easy set of pixel math uh, expressions to do star reduction. I hope you enjoyed this video learning a little bit more about this new star reduction technique. I know that I'll be using it in my image processing, and I hope you will too. I hope that by learning a little bit more, a little deeper understanding of how it works, you can appreciate some of the cleverness that uh, Bill Blanchin actually put into uh, this particular set of expressions, as well as potentially modifying it for yourself. Maybe you can find another solution that is uh, uh, clever and creative in a similar way. I hope to see you again. Please comment down below about what you thought about the video. I hope you will subscribe to the channel. I hope you'll continue to uh, support me in my effort to make videos like this that express all things that are about image processing and PixInsight. Thanks a lot. Until next time, see you then.